I haven't done any teardown for a while, so today we're going to take a look inside this Broadling Black Bean uh, model RM Mini 3. Let me just get it out of the box. So we get the micro USB uh, flat cable. the black bean itself it's all uh, Chinese uh, markings on the product itself and uh, on the box and it appears we don't get uh, one of those uh, small plug packs to power this thing so I'm going to need to uh, well, you, if you decide to buy this device, you're going to need to uh, power it from something. This is how the device looks like. I got it from uh, Banggood. It's about uh, 12, $12 with uh, free shipping. And it's supposed to act like a hub for controlling infrared appliances over the internet. So this thing's got um, Wi-Fi and the smartphone app. So the whole point is for it to learn IR signals from your uh, appliances uh, remotes and then re relay them if you request it from the smartphone app. So based on these uh, specs what we expect to see inside is an IoT like uh, processor uh, like the ESP8266 but we've uh, looked at uh, Broadlink uh, product before and it uses a different uh, processor I think uh, those are cheaper than the ESP8266 in volume, so maybe that's why they're using it. And since they developed software for that processor, they're not going to change it uh, across a range of products, uh, because using the same processor uh, does save time on development and uh, money in the end. And aside from the processor, we will see a bunch of IR emitters. Uh, maybe one IR receiver for reading uh, codes and that's about it. You don't need uh, much else to accomplish this task. It looks nice, it's a uh, compact form factor, uh, it looks like uh, reasonable quality plastics and uh, finish across the product. There was an announcement on the Banggood uh, product page that they are now selling an upgraded version since the 29th of May but I ordered mine before that date. I was on the pre-order list, so uh, I think I got the uh, older version. The upgraded one is supposed to have uh, English uh, manual and uh, uh, English packaging and also more IR codes, but that doesn't uh, make any sense to me. I thought this thing could read and learn IR codes, so why would you say it has more IR codes? Maybe it has some built-in, I don't know, we'll see after the teardown. So let's get started and see how we can open this device. Oh, and by the way, before we get started, uh, there is also a bigger brother. Uh, it's the Broadlink uh, RM Pro, which adds uh, RF 433 MHz and uh, 315 MHz um, control. So you can also control uh, RF stuff like uh, garage doors, for example and uh, others that use uh, uh, RF uh, remotes and uh, I will link that in the description below if you're interested. We don't get any screws on the uh, outside so I think to open this I'll have to remove this uh, black uh, cover and I can kind of feel it uh, moving but it's, uh, it's probably stuck with glue so I'm going to use a prying tool and uh, try to remove this uh, cap. Yeah, so just as I thought, they're using a bit of uh, glue and uh, this thing must be uh, transparent to the um, uh, frequency of these uh, IR emitters, which I believe is 38 uh, kilohertz. So this is one of those uh, IR uh, um, transparent uh, materials. Okay, so uh, we uh, immediately see these um, six IR emitters and uh, this one might be uh, a receiver. 
This board is labeled RM Mini 3 LED PCB version 1.2. Let's see if we can uh, remove this without breaking anything. Yeah, I think it it can lift. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's everything. Inside this uh, this case, you do get a metal base, maybe to add some weight to the product. And we have this uh, two board uh, construction. Oh, and uh, we get uh, two chips in here actually. So that's uh, interesting. I, uh, I was only hoping to see a single chip solution. So let's uh, take a closer look at these um, ICs we see on the main board. I've looked up these uh, two ICs and they're actually companion ICs, meaning they're designed to work together. This one right here is the 88W8801 and it's the Wi-Fi system on chip. It contains all of the analog stuff required for Wi-Fi connectivity and we kind of get a sense of that because uh, we see the uh, Wi-Fi antenna connected to this chip. And the second one is the uh, 88MC200, also from Marvel. Uh, it's a 200 MHz capable Cortex-M3 microcontroller. It even has DC to DC controller integrated on chip. And this one handles the higher level stuff like the Wi-Fi protocol and the actual application layer for this uh, whole system. Marvel would have supplied Broadlink with a complete SDK for de developing IoT apps for these two chips and maybe also an SDK for developing iOS and Android apps that work together with their chips. I even saw a development board on their website that featured uh, these two chips and uh, that can speed up development quite a lot. So let's see what else do we get on this board. This one right here is probably a 3.3 volt regulator to regulate from the 5 volts USB down to 3.3 which uh, probably supplies these two chips and we can see they have used a double footprint uh, right here. They're, they have this uh, SOT89, they're using the SOT89 uh, right, right now but uh, they also have provided another footprint in case they can't get this uh, regulator uh, in a particular um, uh, time or uh, maybe to handle uh, better the heat dissipation. Uh, we have some passives on here, some uh, decoupling caps. Also on the LED board we have some bulk uh, storage caps because these LEDs are probably going to draw some current when they're uh, all active. So they have provided some uh, storage capacity. Uh, we do see four uh, SOT23 uh, transistors on the LED board and we have in total um, seven LEDs. So with four transistor, I, I, would, uh, I would guess they have connected these uh, two by two to uh, three transistors and the seventh LED is connected to a separate uh, transistor. I'm not sure exactly what uh, why they decided to do it this way, but I'm sure they have a good reason. And uh, that's about it. We don't have anything else on this board. Something uh, important to note is that we have uh, what looks like an IR receiver. So maybe we do get that uh, function I was hoping of uh, reading and learning IR codes because otherwise it would be kind of uh, useless just with its uh, built-in codes. Um, on the board, on the back of the board, we see some um, uh, GPIOs marked, uh, JTAG port right here, and interestingly, uh, UART port. So uh, it will be interesting to probe this port and see if we get any kind of uh, console control over this uh, board. As you saw in the beginning of this video, you don't get any um, 5 volts uh, power adapter so you are going to need to supply power your own you can connect this uh, to any uh, micro usb 5 volt um, adapter and uh, let's try to power this thing i have this uh, power bank right now it's connected to my uh, wi-fi access point and it's drawing about 80 milliamps about uh, 0.38 uh, watts 
so I would say it's a it's a good uh, power draw quite a low power draw and uh, you can even power this from a, a large power bank and uh, recharge it maybe once a week or you can just uh, plug in any micro USB charger and uh, uh, with this uh, low current draw it uh, won't be uh, a problem the charger won't heat up it will work just fine well, I've tried installing the Broadlink um, control app on my Nexus 7, but it appears uh, my device is not compatible with this version of the app. Maybe they have restricted the app to uh, be installed only on mobile phones, and this is a tablet, so I'm not sure what the problem is here. But anyway, this was a, a teardown and uh, not a full review, so I don't really need to show you how this thing works there are probably other better reviews out there so this was kind of a, a short review unfortunately there isn't much to be shown on this device but i hope you enjoyed watching this video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time